Good evening, councillors, officers, and members of the public in attendance and our viewers live streaming tonight's council meeting. I declare this meeting open at three minutes past six. My name is Councillor Julie Williams and I'm the Mayor of Darabin City Council and I'm also the chairperson for this evening's meeting. It is my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's council meeting as this meeting is being live streamed and a recording will be made available on the council website as soon as practical after the meeting. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners and we respect the Wurundjeri, the Wurrung people as the traditional owners and the original custodians of the land, waters and their unique ability to care for the country and deep spiritual connection to it. We honour our elders past, present, who's acknowledged and wisdom to ensure that continuation of culture and traditional practices on whose land we meet and share and work. This evening I'd like to introduce you to our councillors and senior staff. I have Councillor Suzanne Newton, our Deputy Mayor, Councillor Gaetano Greco, Councillor Tom Hannan, Councillor Tim Lawrence, Councillor Trent McCarthy, Councillor Lena Messina and Councillor Susan Rennie. Councillor Emily Dimitriades is running a little bit late. I also would like to acknowledge our officers this evening. I have Peter Smith, our CEO. I have Jody Watson, our General Manager. Rachel, Olivia, Kylie Bennett, Vanessa Petrie, and Jacinta Stevens. It's Jacinta's last council meeting, and on behalf of Darabin Council, I want to express our appreciation. Jacinta has been an integral part of Darabin Council as our governance officer. Her meticulous attention to detail and her impeccable organisational abilities have been an invaluable in guiding our council through numerous challenges and ensuring that decisions are made in the best interest of our community. Thank you, Jacinta, for your service and commitment Whittlesea Council is gaining an exceptional professional and I know that you will have a significant impact on their community just as you've had here. Um, as you embark on your new journey to, with Whittlesea Council, we wish you every success in your new role. Um, I do not have any apologies this evening. Um, I'll go over to the next item, which is uh, disclosures of conflicts of interest. So, councillors and officers, do you have conflicts of interest? Councillor so Mayor Messina. Williams, I'd like to declare I have a conflict um, and to be considered to um, leave the chamber in relation to item number 9.1 in relation to home care provider, whether council's considering any um, cost effectiveness in terms of that particular umbrella. Excellent. Councillor Rennie? Um, thank you, Mayor Williams. I have a conflict in relation to 9.1 with the capital expenditure item on Jaka Jaka Community Centre. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. In relation to the confidential item tonight, which is in relation to uh, CEO's contract, I obviously have a contract uh, conflict in relation to that matter and also an interest in that matter, so I'll not be there for that item. Thank you. Any yes. Councillor Hannan? Can you put your microphone on? Whoops, yes. Um, I'm declaring conflict for item uh, 9.4, which is in relation to um, Gladstone Avenue and particularly um, advocacy to the Energy Safe Victoria on, on that one, which is close to my work. Thanks. Any other councillors or officers? Councillor Lawrence. Thank you, Mayor Williams. I have a, a general conflict of interest in relation to Northcote Golf Course through direct family members' residential amenity. Okay, thank you. Any other councillors or officers? Thank you. As you know, that there'll be paperwork that you'll need to fill in for those conflicts and interest. Thank you. 
councillors, uh, I'm pleased if that uh, we have the adoption of minutes of the ordinary council meeting that was held on the 22nd of May and the special council meeting that was held on the 29th of May. Can I kindly please have a mover for those adoptions for those Councillor McCarthy is a mover and Councillor Messina is a seconder. I'll put that to vote. All those in favour? That has been carried unanimously. Thank you. Council has an occupational health and safety responsibility to ensure anyone attending tonight's meeting feels safe, both physically and emotionally. We'll head over to Council uh, public question time. Councillors, we now will move into question time. We have allowed 30 minutes for question time. If we exceed that time, I will be asking for a procedural motion to extend question time for another 30 minutes. In line with Council's governance rules, no question will be taken from people in the gallery unless that you've actually submitted that your, can your question prior to 12 noon today. You can only ask three questions and you can you cannot speak for more than two minutes. Be mindful that this is question time. Questions relating to notice of motions, petitions or urgent businesses will not be accepted in accordance with our governance rules at Darabin. For members of the public who have registered to ask questions in person, I'll call your name when it's time. If I call your name and you do not respond, then I would take that that you are not in the gallery and that one of our officers will read the question on your behalf. The relevant general manager will then provide a response. If you are in attendance, I'll invite you to come up to the lectern to state your name and suburb and ask your question. Any questions that are liked, like for like, will be grouped together and the first person who submitted that question, it will go under their name. So we'll head over to question time. I have Ben, um, is Ben here in the audience? Ben Haywood? No? Well, then I'll hand that over to our officers to ask the question. Thank you. Thank you and through you, Mayor. Ben has submitted two questions. The first one being, how will Council consider the impacts of the recommendations from the final report of the Independent Expert Panel for the Victorian 2035 emissions reduction target. The second question is, will the council consider health impacts from the likely increase in fire air pollution as all residential gas appliances are phased out by 2035? Thank you for your questions. Um, for question one, Officers have reviewed the final report of the Independent Expert Panel for the Victorian 2035 Emissions Reduction Target. So Council is committed to acting on the climate emergency. The electricity we use um, for our operations is renewable and we are carbon neutral. And Council is working towards a new climate emergency plan with a focus on emissions reduction and we'll be asking for community feedback on a draft later this year. With question two, the Victorian Government's gas substitution roadmap highlights energy efficiency, electrification, hydrogen and biogas as the main replacements of gas. Council's committed to helping our community switch to zero emissions and renewable energy and our Solar Saver program helps people access solar. If you are concerned about one of your neighbours polluting the air by not having an appropriate wood burner, please contact, if you could, please provide a 14-day wood heater log to Council and we'll investigate that for you. Thank you, Vanessa. Do I have Mark in the gallery this evening? No? I'll hand that over to you. Thank you. Thank you, and through you, Mayor. So Mark has two questions. Mark is a Thornbury resident, a single father with one child who has been evacuated from the property since April 19th. I have been commuting 50 kilometres a day for eight weeks to take my son to school while I stay in temporary accommodation in East Burwood. The first question, when is a reasonable time frame for council to deem a tenancy to be livable again while a tenant is not visible to timelines on the apartment complex being deemed livable or not livable. 
The second question, can the council foresee an outcome on the timelines around apartments in Striddle Street, Thornbury, being outlined in the next two weeks to provide timelines and clarity for landlords and tenants? Thanks for your questions, Mark, and I am very sorry to hear that um, this has occurred for you. Occupation will be allowed once it has been demonstrated that there are no ongoing safety issues affecting the building. Now, unfortunately, there is no standard time frame. The timing of this depends on the owner and the experts they have engaged to undertake the necessary inspections and or repair works. Um, I do appreciate how difficult it must be, but it is very important. Um, we do ensure that the building is safe. Um, and it is the responsibility of the owner's corporation and the owners to keep the tenants informed of the progress and also of the timing. Thank you. Uh, the next person I have is Peter, Peter Gonas. Through you, Mayor, um, while Peter's getting ready. Peter did have three questions for this evening. The second question was not permitted as it related to a notice of motion. Yep, I understand that. Good evening, Mayor and councillors. Peter, question. can you kindly just speak into the microphone or move the microphone closer to your mouth because those evening. who are online won't be able to hear you. Good Thank evening, you. Mayor and councillors. My first question is, in the interest of transparency and open communication, is the use of personal mobile devices by councillors during a council meeting permitted? Jody, Thank you. Thank you for the question, Peter. There's no specific requirement in either the Local Government Act or our governance rules that prohibit the use of either a council-issued mobile device or a personal mobile device including mobile phones, a tablet or a computer, in a council meeting. What is prohibited is the use of any of those devices to take photographs during the chamber without permission to do so. Okay, as my second question was not permitted, question three, in the interests of transparency and open communication, will the Mayor share with the Darabin community the council's detailed plan for the development of the Reservoir Leisure Centre. That's over to Kylie, thank you. Or oh, Rachel. Uh, thank you, Mayor, uh, and through you. Um, Council's draft 23-24 Capital Works Program that is being considered at tonight's Council meeting uh, commits $300,000 to uh, RLC. Uh, part of that funding, if it is passed by Council uh, tonight, will be used for essential maintenance of the facility and part of that will also be used to undertake a scoping study to explore options for a future redevelopment. As part of the scoping study, Council will undertake broad community consultation to understand community ideas and priorities for any potential redevelopment, but that is subject to Council's decision tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Do we have John in the gallery? John from Reservoir. Thank you, John. Good evening, uh, <clears throat> pardon me. Good evening, Mayor and Councillors. Thank you for hearing us this evening, where our questions relate to the lighting project um, considerations that John Kane pitched to. First question we have is, when can we expect lighting to be finalised at the West End, which is John Kane pitched to, to facilitate and drive community participation and uh, provide player safety? As it's a major concern uh, at the moment that the West End pitch is not at a safe training standard, Adequate lighting um, contributes to this, and it helps, and it make, and it reduces the overall participation at the club. Kylie, did you want to answer that? Thank you. Uh, through you, Mayor. Uh, thank you for the questions. Uh, so this was in relation to John Kane Memorial Park. 
here. Pitch too, yes. Uh, yep, so the John Kay Memorial Park West Pitch Lighting Design Project is at the consultation stage on the electrical designs and I understand that these may have been shared with the Northcote City Football Club today or if certainly not, uh, the plan is to do that shortly. Uh, further funding is required to complete the full design and due diligence stage to prepare for a construction tender. Uh, council tonight will be considering allocating $50,000 for this purpose uh, for the John Kane West but also the press and City Oval. Uh, so again, that, that uh, features in a, a budget item for Council uh, later tonight. Uh, council certainly recognises the benefits of sports field lighting to support participation, um, but I would note that it's not obligated to provide this at all sports grounds. Um, just with question two, what funding will be provided to facilitate temporary lighting whilst the design and construction is occurring? So it's, an immediate safety concern. Kylie, our officer just answered that. Oh. Uh, through you, Mayor, um, there's no additional funding for the temporary lighting. Um, um, at this stage, we're moving ahead, though, with the scoping of the lighting to try and get the permanent lighting in there. So there's no funding in the budget, to be clear, for temporary lighting at this stage. And final question, uh, what allocated funds will be provided to ease the burden of excessive hiring costs of external pitches forced upon due to infrastructure neglect? Three, Mayor. So as uh, Kylie Bennett's answered before, um, there is not an obligation on council under our licences to provide that lighting so um, or to compensate clubs for excessive hiring costs or additional hiring costs when additional grounds have to be moved to be trained on. That's, that's the current situation. doesn't mean you can't ask council to consider that and they can consider that claim. Yeah. I suppose from our consideration is strictly from player safety. Um, it's not about a wish list. It's not about um, wanting. It's more about a, a basic requirement um, and over the... The journey we've seen major injuries. Um, we have a few female players just recently doing ACLs and head concussions um, due to the state of the pitch, but also to some concerns around the lighting and naturally player welfare. So, a, a, from our perspective, it's not not a wish. We see it as a, a requirement to facilitate community sport. Thank you. I'll go over to Carmen Mascot of Thornbury. Is Carmen in the gallery this evening? Over to you, Jacinta. Thank you and through you, Mayor. Carmen has submitted three questions this evening. Has Council installed surveillance devices in Darabin which have facial recognition or number plate recognition capability? If so, what is the purpose of such surveillance? Has Council sought the views of all residents about the installation of such surveillance equipment, its purpose and financial expenditure for installation? I have Rachel will be answering those questions. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so Council doesn't currently use facial recognition or number plate recognition technology in its activities. What Council does use is a range of photo and video technologies as part of its work. So these are things like uh, CCTV on some buildings, body cams on, that are worn by some of our staff or dash cams on some enforcement vehicles. None of those activities use facial recognition or number plate recognition technology at the moment. Um, in terms of question two, the main purposes of using camera technologies are safety and security of people or assets um, or for enforcement activities which rely on collecting suitable evidence. Uh, and in regards to question three, we haven't recently consulted community about use of these sorts of technologies. We do have a surveillance systems policy which is designed to ensure that council's practices align with the state and federal obligations that we have and that's available on our website so community can certainly access it. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. 
Uh, do I have Chris in the gallery this evening? Chris from Northcote? Chris, would you like to come up and ask your question? Uh, good evening, Council. Um, I was told by some people here that somebody will attend to me tomorrow, so I don't know what the situation is. Because the original questions I asked was va overvaluing property, so I don't know whether you use, um, can yep, you answer can ask, those questions. You can ask your question. That's not a problem. I'll have you down here as your question. Right, well... Do, do I get a refund or cover shortfall on sale of property? Is that your question? Uh, that's one of them, yeah. Okay, and the other one was, uh, do City of Darabin check all property sale and give refund if did not make the value on rates notices? Is that the other one? That's correct. Okay, I do have an answer for you from Jody. Uh, Jody, are you able to answer that? Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thank you for the question, Chris, and certainly more than happy to connect with you tomorrow if there's anything that this doesn't help you with tonight. In terms of just being clear, the property revaluations are performed annually by the State Government through the Valuer General's Office. Council can only increase the total income received from rates and charges by the percentage amount set annually by the Victorian Government under the rate cap mechanism. The total amount of rates and charges to be received by Council is then divided by the total valuation of all properties in Darabin to provide Council with the rate in the dollar. As such, council is not able to collect more in rates income by increasing property values. The property valuations are determined as of the 1st of January each year and they're used in the following rating year. Council don't offer a refund for any differences between the valuation provided by the Valuer General and the sale price that you may achieve if selling your property. Residents can object to council, to council regarding the valuations. There's a prescribed mechanism um, which can be used within two months of the date of issue. So you could wait until your rates notice is received for the coming year and then you have the ability to um, question the, the valuation and that can be reviewed for you. What we can do is um, arrange to give you the contact details of the team or I can organise for an officer to call you tomorrow if you'd like some more information. I hope that's helpful. I've spoken to many officers here. I have multiple properties. My problem is they are overvalued by a great deal of money. Nobody seems to want to do anything about it. That's what my problem is. I mean, they all say they can... They can um, there uh, is a process that you can go, th go with. Um, what I'll do, I'll get our officers to contact you to go through that process and what they can... Because it's engage. not just valuation of properties. There's a whole chain of additionals that's actually connected. When you own multiple properties, you're under the, um, um, uh, the, the, um, the tax burden of the state revenue. If you value a property here, I own multiple properties in the country, properties that, are, that you just don't even see here, they go up in state revenue. Now, it's a... It's OK, a, um, I appreciate, but as I said, this is question time and we can't answer your questions that you're... That you're asking at this point in time. So I'll get one of our officers to contact you within the next 20, 48 hours. Is that OK? OK, thank you. Thank you. I'll go over to our next person, which is... I apologise, is that we have a big agenda this evening and we do have 17, 17 um, submitters in questions and we have other submitters this evening too. Uh, Wayne, is Wayne in our gallery this evening? Wayne, if you'd like to step up, thank you. Uh, I'm a resident of uh, Youngman Street, Preston, and uh, uh, not long ago we had residential parking placed out front of our place, and I contacted the uh, council, and uh, the council advised me that the people of Youngman Street wanted it. But uh, I went through the... Uh, spoke to everybody in Youngman Street, and nobody seemed to have wanted it. Uh, they don't want... Uh, they don't want the parking. They want the signs removed... Um, the way it's done is ridiculous. And, uh, and your question is why, in reference to you want the parking restrictions to be removed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The people, well, I went through, there was only one person in the 400 metres um, of that parking area that wanted the, uh, the resident parking. 
And the only reason he wanted it, because he was on the corner and had building works going next to him, going on next to him. So I'm just looking at your questions that you've submitted. Yep. Um, so the first part of it is about you want them removed and um, when can they be removed? And the second part of your question was um, uh, as being in the street is half empty at night time for those residents who have more than one car um, in the drive in the household, yeah. uh, how we'd be able to use the car parking so a... in the street when there is no allocation parking for more than one yeah. car per household. And your third question, the Quest Hotel is required to provide to it provide to provide one free car parking space per room. However, it has come to your attention that they are charging $15 for car parking spaces. How will council resolve this matter and continue to monitor it? So I'll take those questions that we have been submitted, if that's okay, Wayne, yeah, and I'll get well. Vanessa to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks for your questions, Wayne. Yep. So with, with the first one, the parking signs in Youngman Street were designed, they were designed with the community in response to a request for changes in some changes in the area. So the changes are part of a 12-month trial, and that's going to end in March 2024, and residents will be involved in the review process. With your second question, residents that are eligible to obtain a permit, um, they're encouraged to get one. Others are encouraged to make use of their off-street parking or park in areas where it is legal to do so. Um, with your third question about the Quest Hotel, a planning enforcement officer is going to contact you to tomorrow. Yeah. Um, could I mention that uh, anybody over uh, who has a property over two, built over 2003 can't park in the street? They're not allowed to park in the street. I have a property. I have a uh, parking in my backyard, but I've been waiting two months for the council to come and cut the tree so I can get one of my vehicles in the backyard. Okay, you know, Wayne, that's, that's... these are extra questions, but what I can also do, can we take that on notice and get one of our officers to uh, contact you in reference to those other questions that you seem to have? Yeah, well, the last time I did, they didn't seem to want to listen to anybody, only what he wanted to say. You know, well, Wayne, I've, I've got your people. phone number and details. Yeah. I'll make sure that gets followed up because we've had we've had previous conversations on the phone, yeah, so I have, have no problem in, in yeah. following that up yeah. myself, OK? Thank you very much. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Wayne. Uh, Marion, is Marion in the gallery this evening? If not, then I will hand that over to our officers. Thank you. Thank you and through you, Mayor. Marion has two questions. My question is about the annual performance report of the Audit and Risk Committee, which is in the governance report at Appendix E. This annual report is dated 19 June 2023 and has an empty column for attendance of committee members at the 19th of June 2023 committee meeting. Does this mean the next annual performance report will be for the period 20 June 2023 to some point in June 2024? and therefore the public will have to wait six to 12 months to see the recommendations and finding of the 19 June committee meeting. The second question, in report 9.1, the report to adopt the budget, one of the recommended resolutions is that in accordance with section 94 2E and H of the Local Government Act 2020, declares the rate and annual service charges for the 2023-24 rating year commencing 1 July 2023 and ending 30 June 2024, as detailed in the budget 2023-24. This means that the declared rates and service charges will not be listed in the minutes of the council meeting. Doesn't a declaration require more than just declaring that something is somewhere in a 150-page document? I'll hand that over to Jody. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Marion. Um, with the exception of one independent audit and risk committee member, I can confirm that all of the committee were in attendance at the meeting last Monday, um, the details being absent due to the timing of the audit and risk committee meeting being the day before this agenda was published. What I can also confirm is that the annual report, performance report will be published on our website um, sometime this week after Council's um, noted that tonight. I would also like to confirm that in addition to the 
annual report that you see in the agenda tonight, um, Council, in addition to the requirement under Local Government Act to prepare a biannual report twice a year for Council, we actually do have a requirement in our governance rules where we actually provide summary minutes to Council after each and every Audit and Risk Committee meeting. And so that report details the recommendations and findings of the committee and that's reported typically the month after the Audit and Risk Committee has occurred, which would be in July, which would be next month for that detail. In relation to the second question regarding the adoption of the budget, Section 94 of the Local Government Act 2020 actually requires us to, to comply with 10 elements of adopting a budget and to ensure that they are met. In terms of the, the vast number of fees and charges that are declared through the budget in the appendix tonight, it's not practical to list each of those within the recommendation. Um, it's already a particularly large recommendation to include each of those fees and charges would not be practical and is not common amongst councils. What I would say is that they are included in detail at Appendix C within the Council report tonight. And thank you again for the questions. Thank you, Jody. And that concludes this evening's question time. Submission, submissions. Um, uh, council governance rules permitted members of the public to register to address any ordinary council meeting in relation to matters listed in the agenda. Thank you to those who have registered their intention to do so. Prior to the relevant agenda item, those people who have registered to make a submission will be invited to come forward one by one to address to Council. In accordance with our governance rules, submissions can't be made in relation to notice of motions or urgent businesses. Petitions. Council, we have three petitions this evening that will be tabled. I believe the first petition I have is Councillor Newton. Yes, thank you, Mayor. And I believe there's a submitter to this petition, so should they speak before or after? Um, through you, Mayor. Uh, usually the petition is tabled first and then the originator of the submission uh, can do a submission. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Williams. I move a motion to table a petition for a referral to the CEO for consideration and response concerning the funding of the Water Watch program via the Mary Creek Management Committee, MCMC. I move the petition signed by approximately 102 people that complies with council governance rules stating, quote, for over 13 years, the City of Darabin has been funding the Water Watch program via Mary Creek Management Committee. Darabin's 23-24 budget has been released and it has not confirmed the funding for the Water Watch program. Water Watch Victoria is a 30-year program that enables us to understand, monitor, care for and sustainably manage our most precious natural asset, water. It is a network of volunteer citizen scientists that monitor local waterways. It could be a creek, pond, lake, dam, wetland, lagoon or estuary. Within the city of Darabin, it is Darabin Creek, Edgars Creek, Mary Creek and Edwards Lake. Water Watch programs support communities from ages 3 to 80 to monitor the health of waterways, to learn through environmental education and to participate in projects to protect, rehabilitate or restore the health of our waterways. We are petitioning the city of Darabin to ensure that Mary Creek Management Committee receives that annual funding of 25000 to run the following programs so that they remain free of charge to participants. Support to five Darabin volunteer monitoring groups, admin annual reports, data entry, Mary Creek rapid response to litter program support, preparing community events, answering community questions, loading citizen science litter data, preparing reports, cleaning out litter kits, etc. Kindergarten, primary and high school education, water watch training day for new volunteers, frog discovery events including creating frog habitat. We ask that you sign this petition advocating for your local waterway and ensuring this important citizen science program continues, end quote. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Newton. I do have a, a submitter this evening for that item. Um, can I please invite Kate? that would like to speak. You have two minutes to speak, Kate. Thank you. Uh, hello, councillors and mayor and employees, and most importantly, um, country, which feels very far removed in this room, but I do note that you have three pictures of creeks on the walls. So, <laughs> just being observant, um, I, I very much feel that nature, climate change and and biodiversity is a core value of, of Darabin. You speak about this in many meetings, you speak about reconciliation. Climate change 
is, is, is very important to this community and this council, so much so that you declared a climate emergency. Climate and nature have an intimate partnership. Um, if, if the climate is in peril, it means that nature's in peril. Nature includes our creeks and our waterways. Humanity has a great effect on our creeks and waterways because we currently use them as a drain and probably always will. If we're not monitoring them, we don't know what that effect of humanity is. We all like to gravitate towards them. We like to walk along them with our families. We like to walk along them with our dogs. Our biodiversity gravitates towards them. The, the simple creatures that pollinate our tomatoes in our vegetable patches at home gravitate towards them. Um, we cannot continue to measure the effect of this 13-year partnership with Mary Creek Management Committee without the Water Watch program. We have over 35 dedicated citizen science scientists who volunteer hours of their time monthly to monitor the health of the waterways. Um, I'm, I'm one of them, and on a personal note, Edwards Lake and Eggers Creek, which has, uh, is subject to black water events, um, we monitor eight sites, and it takes us four hours a month by the time we get all the data in. The citizen scientists and the community is well and truly here. Please don't make us go and chase funding on, on our already very busy plates. Thank you. Thank you very much. Perfect timing. I have another second petition from Councillor Messina. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I move a motion to table a petition for the referral to the CEO for consideration and response concerning to the scoping of lights at BT Connor Reserve Car Park. I move the petition signed by approximately 14 people in, on hard copy and 474 people online, and that complies with the council's governance rules stating, we hereby thank Darabin City Council for considering as part of the budget process scoping of lights for BT Connor Reserve Car Park at Broadhouse Avenue Reservoir Street Lights. We at Preston Lions Football Club acknowledge that the design, scope and delivery of the project will provide safer environment for all and most importantly for 350 children, parents, girls and women that play for our club. Every fortnight during the season, almost 5,000 people leave BT Connor Reserve through a dark car park and street and we are concerned for their health and safety departing the council-owned asset. We understand that there's been unruly behaviour in the evenings in the car park and lighting will provide a safer environment for all. We also understand that Darabin City Council will have to advocate to the energy provider the information to deliver the process. Please consider this as part of your process. Thank you. Can I kindly invite Sylvana uh, in reference to her submission on this item? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Councillors. Um, as Lena mentioned, my name's Sylvana Namofsky. I'm the Vice President of Preston Lions Football Club. Um, not having lights in a dark car park very late in the evenings has become a real big safety concern. Myself as a female walking out there late in the evenings, I feel very uncomfortable with this. Um, and have to usually be accompanied by a few people with me uh, to get back to my own car. Uh, we have many women and children and parents attending uh, the car park or the, uh, the club in the evenings and, um, and have expressed a lot of concern around their safety for this and particularly the unruly behaviour which has been observed and seen by a lot of people out in the community is, again, another safety concern for us. So, thank you. Thank you very much. I believe the third petition I have is also from Councillor Messina. Thank, thank you. you, Mayor. Um, I move a motion to table a petition for the referral to the CEO for consideration and response concerning the, the parking signs on Young Man Street, Preston. I move the petition signed by approximately 27 people and that it complies with council's governance rules stating that the residents of Young Man Street and close surrounding area request that the standing signs be removed from Young Man Street, Preston, or money should be refunded to all house holders for parking permits and the Quest Hotel Apartments should provide free parking with their room booking so that the customers do not park in Young Men Street. I there um, for move that it be addressed to the um, CEO. Thank you. We do not have a submitter for the item, so I'll move on to the next part.
councillors, we have a large agenda this evening and we'll need to get through in... Sorry, Mayor. Mayor if I'm so, like... I think we need um, seconders for those too. motions and to vote on those motions. I'm happy to second Councillor Newton. I wonder if we could do them as three petitions at once to move that all three... We'll, do all, we'll vote on all three. So all those in favour for that to be... A seconder then... Oh, sorry. So who was the mover? You're the mover. Councillor so Messina, the yeah. mover. Councillor McCarthy, the seconder. I'll put that to vote. All those in favour? Thank you. Councillors, um, uh, I will be permitting questions to our officers before we commence uh, the debate on each item. If, uh, if I think it's, we've had a sufficient question, questioning time has occurred, I'll exercise my rights under the governance rules and limit the questions and ask for the debate to, to commence. Excuse me, Mayor. My understanding was there was going to be submissions to the budget. Are we going to hear from the three submitters prior to the budget item or they were going to be addressed it now? Okay. We certainly do. We have three submitters that towards the budget, but we haven't got to that point yet. Thank you. So I'll move straight into our business for this evening. Before we ask questions to our officers, we do have three submitters that I wish to address uh, this, this item for the budget. So the submitters I have this evening, if you, when I call your name, you, can, you have a couple of minutes to speak on the item. I have John who would like to speak. I believe you've registered your name. Okay, then I have Whitlam. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Madam Mayor and uh, Councillors. My name is Whitlam Malcoon. Uh, I am a Thornbury resident and current president of the VFL Northern Borderlands Football Club, which is situated at Preston City Oval. Tonight I'm joined by Chair Leighton Wood. Borderlands' purpose is connection belonging, charity and community. Our club is determined to make a difference to the lives of the 24% of Australians who identify themselves to be lonely. And unlike clubs we compete against, the Borderlands have a categoric no to gaming revenue. Our volunteer board has spent thousands of hours this year delivering on this purpose with the goal of becoming a genuine community asset. Our first community day held on, on June the 4th past attracted a crowd of just over 2,000, mainly Darabin residents, none of whom were lonely on that day, where we proudly donated and raised funds to the Children's Hospital Appeal of over $22,000. Our next community day is set for the 22nd of July, with the, benefit, the beneficiary being Bandura-based Big Group Hug, who support the children of disadvantaged families in the north. Don't get me wrong, we want to win football games, but this is much, much bigger than just football. We know that hosting games under the lights swell crowds and we have a fantastic new train station, a large empty market car park that makes it easy for people to attend a night match. We know that hosting games under lights swell crowds. We also know that the lighting provision is currently a tenth of the lux required to play and create a genuine OHS issue at training for players and coaches alike, with players regularly travelling in excess of 30 kilometres an hour as per the tracking data. Quality lighting will support our vision to become a powerhouse on and off the field, which include being a strong women's program we're working on at the moment. Tonight, we ask the Council to support our great 140-year-old Preston institution by approving the budget required to scope quality lighting solution. And with one second to go, I'll take this opportunity to wish Madam Mayor a happy birthday as well. Cheers. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Willem. I appreciate that. Um, I have a third submitter this evening. I have Silvana. Are you there? Uh, you have two minutes, I believe, that you have registered. Or have you already spoken? I've already spoken. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank you to our submitter this evening. I appreciate that. I beg your pardon? Are we able to actually submit? Yeah, you are. Yep. You, you, you had registered, yes, for two minutes to speak. You have two minutes to speak. Thank you. Uh, thank you again, Council. We appreciate uh, your time and consideration, and we do hope that you strongly um, consider the motion of uh, supporting our lighting proposal that John Kane pitched to. Our club is over 60, is 63 years old. We have over 400 members, and we have essentially two parks available to us on lease. Uh, which is John Kane Pitch 1 and Pitch 2. Pitch 2 is significantly degraded from a playing surface perspective, but it also has no lights, uh, no light capacity, capacity other than overflow from Pitch 1. 400 members, two fields, and as a result of shortcoming to our earlier questions, we as a club are forced to spend in excess of fifty to $60,000 um, in hiring additional fields just so we can trade as a club. Uh, without that, we're not talking about necessity. We're, talk we're talk not talking about extra um, capacity or wish list items. If we do not do that, we cannot apply our trade to our community. Uh, this is the current state of Pitch 2 at, uh, at John Kane, where we've suffered multiple injuries and we're trying to drive to no end um, increase our participation. What you see around us is the well-lit um, multi-purpose stadium, you see netball courts in excess of $60 million worth of investment and uh, our rate per capita, the usage that we have per, uh, per capita, per, per member, uh, we have got essentially very little support from council on this. At the moment, we are risking a very unsafe workplace and we would like to understand what council's obligations are as a landlord to help us as a tenant trade safely and not put financial burden and strain on our club, which is what currently is happening by us trying to find alternate venues other than the ones that are on our lease to uh, allow our members to participate. And these are not supportive of initiatives like Play for Free campaigns that we've had. Um, so we, again, urgently thank you and consider your investment into the Thank process. you very much. Perfect timing. And I'd like to say thank you to all our submitters this evening. Councillors, uh, we'll move on to um, if councillors have any questions to our officers regarding this item on 9.1. So, council officers' recommendation is one to three that will be dealt with separately. We'll allow the three councillors who have a conflict of interest in this uh, when they participate in the remainder of the budget discussion and debate as points one to three is just for noting and I'll be seeking a procedural motion to move those points in block once the councillors have declared their conflicts and have left the chamber. Councillors who wish to declare a conflict of interest for points one to three of the <coughs> officer's recommendation, could you please now declare your conflicts? Councillor Messina. Thank you. I'd like to note that I have a conflict on item number one in terms of the officer's re recommendation regarding the aged care reforms, council action plan one to 20 under aged care and home support fees and charges. Thank you. Councillor Lawrence. Um, yes, Mayor Williams, I'd like to declare I have a general conflict through a direct family member with residential amenity um, interest connected with Northcote Golf Course. Thank you. Councillor Rennie. Um, thank you, Mayor Williams. I'd like to declare that I have a conflict in relation to capital expenditure on Jaka Jaka Community Centre as an I am employed there. Thank you. I'll ask those councillors to leave the chamber. Mayor, Mayor, sorry, can I just ask a procedural question? Um, I, I believe it disadvantages each of those councillors to not be able to participate on the matters that they do not have conflicts in. So I'm wondering if we can actually vote on each of those motions separately? Or I just would question whether we should be, I suppose. This is just to note. This is not part of the next part that you're thinking of. That's fine then, Mayor. I'll... Sorry. that. Um, 
Yeah, we had this sort of conversation. I know you came a little bit later sure. today, so thank you. So, councillors, we're just asking for a mover to move the points of one to three in block. Do I have a... It's just a procedural motion. So I have Councillor Newton as the mover and Councillor McCarthy as a seconder. Uh, I'll put that item to vote. All those in favour? I have Councillor Dimitriatis, Councillor Hannan, Councillor Newton, Councillor McCarthy and myself. All those against? Or abstaining? Moving block. Against moving in block. Yeah, against moving in block. Councillor Gaetano Greco, thank you. I'll ask for the for the three to come back in. Have, have, you, have you moved? That was a procedural motion. Have you procedural moved? Motion. Yeah, I need to move them on block. Is that That's, done? No, no, that was to do it on block. Now we need a mover to actually move yeah, the, as a recommendation. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right, now I need a mover to move the three. To, to move the three. I apologise. Happy to move, Mayor. And I need a seconder. Councillor Hannan. I'll put that vote. All those in favour? Councillor Hannan, Councillor Newton, Councillor McCarthy and Councillor Williams. All those against? Can you just explain what exactly we're voting for at the moment? This is points one, two and three. As a block um, item? Yes. So the first part was a procedure that we're going to vote for that now that we've voted for now the, the three. So I have Councillor Hannan, Councillor Newton, Councillor McCarthy, Councillor Williams and Councillor Greco and that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Now we will ask the councillors to come back into the chamber. Um, I'll hand over to Jody Watson, who has a minor adjustment that she would like to announce. Thank you, Mayor. Councillors, I'd just like to draw your attention to a minor adjustment to the officer recommendation at point six to note the following projects have been amended since the draft budget and are reflected in attachment C. Appendix C is the draft budget itself, councillors, it's just for clarity. And Point 22. Just bringing that up on the screen for you, councillors. So at point 22, a minor adjustment in bold, authorising the CEO to make any necessary adjustments to the 10-year financial plan resulting from your early decision on the budget. Thank you, Miss Watson. Okay, councillors, do I have a mover to this motion, which is points four to 23? Yes, Mayor. And happy to second. Uh, Mayor, if I might, I'd like to move it with the most uh, tiny of adjustments, which has been previously discussed, which was to put 25,000, not 20,000, against Water Watch. I'll hand that over to Councillor... Sorry, hand that over to Jody who can answer that question. Thank you. Um, if, if a staff member could explain why that adjustment's being made. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, the petition was for 25000 The original amount we funded, Water Watch, was 25000 We... Um, we're trying to try and make some savings to, to fund operationally... 
5,000 of that for the education programs. I was advised this afternoon that we couldn't and we need the 25,000 in the budget to keep our funding to Water Watch. Thank you, Mr Smith. Accordingly, um, we, uh, that's the motion I would like to move would be uh, for that 25,000, but otherwise everything is exactly the same um, as what's in the paper. I'm happy to second Mayor Williams. Thanks. Okay, thank you. So do I have a mover as Councillor Rennie and the seconder as Councillor Newton? Thank you. Does the mover wish to speak on this item? Um, yes, thank you, Mayor Williams. Every year we spend um, quite a significant amount of time looking at Council's finances and considering collaboratively how uh, we should invest uh, the money that we collect through various sources. And often we spend you know, a disproportionate amount of time, I suppose, we could say over what are fairly modest items whilst overlooking the fact that primarily our role in a budget is to make sure that the business of government is able to take place, that the staff are paid, that the infrastructure is cared for and is put in place. And so a huge amount of what we're doing tonight is actually making sure that the wheels of government continue and uh, that takes many millions of dollars. And so I'm really proud that, you know, we as a council have recognised that financial responsibility first and foremost. This has been a difficult year um, and there are a number of reasons for that. There's a, a COVID legacy piece which has, I think, shifted some things in the fi uh, sort of financial landscape. And importantly, uh, interest rates have gone up very significantly as have building costs. And the, these two things are probably the largest drivers, most significant drivers of uh, challenge in this environment, which mean that we cannot afford the level of capital works that we've had in the past and that I know we would all like to deliver for our community. But we have a responsibility not just for the community this year, but for the community in future years and to make sure that we don't burden future generations either with debt or future councils with an inability to make good decisions. Uh, tonight it's worth noting that we're not only passing the budget, we're also passing a four-year capital works plan and I think that's right, is it? No, it's the four-year financial plan and the 10-year financial plan. Um, and unusually we've had to revisit the 10-year financial plan, which we put in place a couple of years ago because of these, you know, the significance of the changes in the financial landscape. I don't think there's a council here that doesn't feel the weight of that responsibility and some regret at some of the things that we had hoped to be able to deliver for the community that we're not able to deliver. Anyone who follows councils around the state will know that we are not in a unique position in that. Indeed, there have been articles in the media recently about councils that are um, in, in a much more perilous financial state than we are. We want to make sure we don't go there. And so to community members who are hoping to see more in the 10-year financial plan and who, like us, are disappointed that we can't deliver on every piece of infrastructure we'd like to deliver, um, please understand that what we want to do is preserve our ability to spend on necessary infrastructure for Thank future you, generations Council. of residents in Darabin. Thank you. Councillor Newton has been the seconder. Would you like to speak on the item? Yes, I would. Thank you, Mayor Williams. Um, I know that a council budget isn't the same as a household budget, um, but I did get another letter in the mail today about an interest rate rise um, for my mortgage, and I know that there are a lot of people in our community feeling it really tough. Council does have similar budget pressures in that what we forecast for interest rate rises has really changed um, over the last period and we now have to make some really tough decisions, which is what this budget is. Um, I know that there are projects and things that every councillor here would like to see in this budget that aren't there. Um, for me personally, I've got a very strong interest in cycling and active transport. Um, I've got an eight-month-old son who I've just put on the back of my electric bike, uh, which is really exciting and I'm now, um, you know, having to 
brace Darabin streets um, with a baby on the back. So um, certainly I would have loved to have seen more on cycling and active transport. Um, but I think everyone has um, things that they would like to have seen of more. Uh, we did go through a draft process and something I'm really grateful for for this community is that you did come and tell us um, when there wasn't something that we delivered on or there was something that we'd taken out that wasn't right. Um, so I think a good example of that is Water Watch where pretty much immediately um, the community was saying that that is something that we have to continue. Uh, I think we heard very passionately from Friends of it's Lake tonight about why that's so important. Um, and I do think this is a balanced budget for where we are at this particular moment in time. Um, I think that where we've gotten to is something where I hope that our community is satisfied with. Um, certainly, I know that there was a lot of submissions about sporting facilities, and I do know that um, I think all of us would love to see more upgrades there, but it's really challenging to do it across the whole city with the budget constraints that we have. Um, but I know how much work the volunteers and the presidents and the clubs are putting into their sport every week. Um, I'm really glad to see things like libraries after dark make it back in there. Um, and particularly, I think with the cost of living crisis, I'm particularly pleased to see the inclusion of the Towards Zero project as well, which will be help address homelessness in our city. Um, I saw someone in a tent. Um, Thank you, your time's a, up. Yep, just to finish that point, um, I did see someone in a tent in a park just across the way in Brunswick recently, and I think um, homelessness is a growing problem. I'll end Thank it there. You. Thank you. Councillors, do I have any other speakers on this item? Councillor I have, a, I have an amendment, Councillor Williams. Uh, Mayor Williams, sorry. Sure. Thank you. That is your amendment? That's correct. Okay. That's um, correct, Mayor. To support the amendment being considered as part of the 2023-24 budget, I have determined under the R3.31F of the Governance Rules that the motion to include the item in the final budget should be rejected on the, bias, on the basis that it is the same as or similar intent to the previous motion, which was considered by Council in the proceedings within the proceedings of the last six months. But I can ask the councillors who can who can sorry who consent in the motion amendment to include the item in the final budget being accepted for consideration and debate that this is the time to raise your hands to vote that we can do that. All Mayor, those... sorry, before we move to that vote, could I just, um, sorry, I'll stand up, ask for um, some governance advice as to whether this is allowable, not because it's already been debated, but because it's in direct contradiction to the motion. So you, an amendment cannot be directly contrary to a motion, as I understand it, and because the motion explicitly um, takes out some of these things, is it possible under the governance laws to explicitly put them in when it's directly contrary? Does that make sense? Yep, and that's, so it's, that's, that's different why we've from got the governance question of them advice, having been debated. Advice that this is very similar, all the intent, um, but I'll ask for our governance to actually answer that. Thank you. I don't know what the answer will be, but... Undo it. Through you, Mayor, and um, to answer your question, Councillor Rennie. So, point six of the officer recommendation was just for Council to note. Okay. Um, there was no recommendation as such. Note the removal. Uh, through you, Mayor. So, this is an amendment to part seven. So, it's not in contrary to part six, which is just to note, I think, is the advice. Okay, thank you. So, councillors, we're actually just voting on whether we're allowing this amendment to be heard this evening. So, I'll put that item to vote. All those in favour? That's been carried unanimously. Thank you. Councillor Messina. And so, you don't, we don't need a, a seconder for this amendment to go in? Uh, yes, we I've do. just been told. So, you do. through you, Mayor, if I can just explain. Um, because uh, this um, recommendation or amendment had been put up previously, the first part of it is using the Mayor's discretion whether or not it can be included for consideration. The next step is 
that we then have Councillor Messina as the mover, then we have a seconder, and it becomes an amended motion to be debated as you ordinarily would. So now we do need a seconder, so Councillor Greco, thank you. Councillor Messina. Thank you. thank you for that clarification. And I just want to reiterate that the Creek, Mary Creek lighting is not quite lighting at Mary Creek. It's just where the BT Connor Reserve is. Just want to clarify that. Through you, Mayor Williams, I welcome the Water Watch project inclusion and I welcome the Towards Zero project. I know that our CEO and work on this project at Port Phillip and Councillor Lawrence's motion on this. The Northern Bull Councillor Anx... Messina, can you just slow down? Only because we have an interpreter who's doing the sign oh, language. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. I'll slow down. Okay. I wel can I start again? Yeah, I welcome the Water Watch project inclusion and I welcome the Towards Zero project. I note that the CEO work on this project at Port Phillip and Councillor Lawrence's motion on this. The Northern Bull Ants and the Northcote Football Club, Preston Lions, are three of our North's powerhouse clubs, not just Darwin, but Melbourne's North, and all three playing in this second division at the state level, with one awaiting elevation to a second tier national level. I welcome the budgetary, the budgetary allocations of funds. We know that the works are needed at these sporting grounds, including advocacy work, advocacy work with the state and federal, plus the Football Federation Victoria and the AFL. Scoping is the, comment, the commencement of a journey. I wish to also acknowledge the Preston Cricket Nets also in the budget, and I ask my fellow councillors to support the scoping of these in the project. I also note that three items from the draft budget that relate to elevating and embracing, celebrating our multicultural community have been eroded to smaller events and even cancelled. We have eroded the out of the park picnic, we have eroded the homemade food and wine festival and we have cancelled and waved goodbye to the migration monument. Council, what does it say about this council? Multiculturalism is not merely a buzzword, it is diluted under diversity banner. We've bought three, we thought three council terms for the Intercultural Centre. We just had Refugee Week. We stood and we said and we welcome refugees, migrants and asylum seekers. It appears that these are just words. We should not be erasing but elevating cultural identities. And when we do so, we erase the rich tapestry of our community. We say we embrace multiculturalism with open arms. You do not seek to understand or learn from or celebrate one, one another's differences. It's just a concept. It's where is the reality? Um, so therefore, I ask my fellow councillors to please consider both items. I have not excluded those items um, out of the budget in terms of monetary value because I believe we can find some of those budget items later on during the year. Thank you, Councillor Messina. As the seconder, Councillor Greco, would you like to speak on the item? I will reserve my right to speak. Uh, I reserve my right to speak, Mayor. No problem. Councillor Lawrence. Um, yes, Mayor Williams. Um, can I just speak to this item and speak to the budget later? Or? Correct. Yeah. Um, yes, I'm happy to um, support this um, um, addition to the budget. Um, Obviously, um, there was a very successful game recently at BT Connor. There was four or 5,000 people there. It was a fantastic night. But you were really uh, in danger trying to get across the terrain of um, dirt footpaths and, and, con and concrete and car parks to get to uh, back to Radford Road after that. So um, just a trip hazard is, is just a huge there. So I'm grateful to see that coming in and obviously Council has spent a lot of money with uh, Preston Lions in recent years to make it a premier and fantastic facility that it is. And just in regards to the Migration Monument, um, just uh, recently Councillor Hannon and the Mayor and myself attended a Intercultural Refugee Day where we had three women uh, refugees, survivors of three different wars over three different de decades, uh, discuss their personal journeys to safety and to family and, s and to uh, fulfilling free lives here in Australia. And I think that's certainly the kind of thing we want to celebrate. Any other councillors that would like to speak on the item? Councillor Rennie. Um, thank you, Mayor. I'm going to speak against these for different reasons. I'm going to speak against the car park street lighting works at BT Connor because 
I want uh, the community to understand a word of caution in relation to what scoping means. We have no funds in the four-year budget to deliver on these projects. And I feel as though in that context it's disingenuous to put 30000 towards scoping, raising expectations of the community that I think our financial position means we won't be um, in a position to satisfy. And so I don't think by speaking tonight I'm going to materially change the outcome of what happens here. But I do think, uh, with respect to the great need that I know has been identified, I do think it's really important that people understand that uh, what happens here tonight doesn't mean that people are going to get their lights next year. And for that reason, I think it's disingenuous to support it. I'm speaking against the 20,000 for the Migration Monument for a different reason. And that is because I don't believe monuments are inherently the way to achieve what Councillor Messina and Councillor Greco are seeking to achieve here. I think at the end of my street there was a fabulous uh, business called Cotsellers. Everyone knew what Cotsellers was, where it was, what they did. It was, it was just the most extraordinary place to go and do your shopping. And a number of years ago that business collapsed or, or they sold and an apartment building came in its place. And on the side of that apartment building, integrated into the facade, is a fabulous image from a photo of that of, of people in that store and that business representing that multicultural heritage and what used to be on that site. And that's an example of integrating art into the built form. I think monuments are inherently colonial entities. I think they are more often than not unsuitable and I don't think we solve the problem of the fact that we have way too many uh, white men symbolised in monuments up. by creating another monument. I'd rather see art integrated... Um, into our built form. Thank you. Any other councillors would like to speak? Councillor Newton. Thank you, Mayor Williams. I'm speaking against this item for a few reasons. So this is trying to jump the queue, so to speak. We have an outdoor sports infrastructure framework which has 7.2 sports field lighting. The clubs that are recommended for lighting upgrades include, or the reserves are CH Sullivan, Chris Park, Edwards Lake Athletics, HB Zoir, IW Dole, JC Donath, Central and East, Jay Moore, John Kane, John Hall, KB Hardiman, Ellie Cochin, McDonald West, Preston City, TW Andrews and WH Mott. We have done the work to find out where the sports field lighting needs to happen first and that has been put into the outdoor sport infrastructure framework that we all supported. This will be jumping the queue on that. Can I um, just make it clear that this yep. is not sports lighting, this is a street lighting. Sure. So this is street lighting um, that we do not have money to do. Um, I believe that the full price of this would be, you know, more than 10 to 30 times this 30K amount that we're putting in. Uh, the amendment does say Merry Creek lighting, and we know that that means that there could be risks to biodiversity by putting lighting on the Merry Creek. Uh, in terms of safety, I have been to that site. I understand that it's dark, but it's soccer matches that people are going to, so they're all going to get there at the same time and they're all going to leave at the same time. So I think that there are other places in Darwin where people might feel less safe. Uh, and in terms of the migration monument, it's similar. We don't have money to do a migration monument, so I think it would be disingenuous to the community to put in $20,000 for scoping something that we can't afford. Thank you. Um, I think we've heard enough of the debate, but um, I'll, I'll give uh, Councillor Messina a right of reply if she... My, oh, sorry. My okay, you reserved your right. I'll let you speak then, Councillor Greco, if you like. Uh, thank you, Mayor Williams. I, I thank Councillor Messina for putting in uh, these amendments. Uh, I note um, that these two amendments were included in the draft budget, but they have since been deleted from the draft budget. Um, no, I have heard any um, uh, objections from community members about excluding these items from the draft budget. Instead, I've heard from community members um, that this should um, stay in the draft budget and should not be, should not be excluded. In, in relation to uh, BT Connors, I'll deal with that first. I think it's very important that we have the, um, the lighting um, considered there and 
councillors, let's be precise here. We're not talking about the Capital Works program. We're talking about a scoping project. A scoping project could come up with many types of solutions in terms of how the, the issue needs to be addressed there. Um, there are safety issues that have been mentioned and also what needs to be considered that this is a club that's come a long way. This is a club that's achieved state level um, status and state level significance. And there are many women that participate in sport, in, 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 in sport of, of that club. So it's incumbent on us that we uh, provide some safety, particularly to women. In relation to the monument, I'm always surprised, councillors. Um, I just have to keep reminding council of the stats of this city. Nearly 70% 70, 70 of people that live in this city are from a non-English speaking background. More than 30% of the people that live in this city were born overseas. And when I look at this city that I've grown up in all, all my life here, there are no references to um, the cultural diversity of the city in any fixed or standing manner. If I look at the street names, barely could count um, names in, in one hand that are from a diverse background. So what we're suggesting here is, again, a scoping project that recognises the, the, the enormous contribution that migration has made to the Australia, and in particular to a city like Darabin, which is one of the most um, diverse and multicultural Your municipalities in all of Australia. So, councillors, I ask you to dig into Councillor your conscience. Councillor Gregor, your time's up. Thank you. Councillors, can you kindly please be mindful that we do have Auslan obviously trying to interpret. So those who are speaking quite fast, they're trying to keep up and I can see that they're struggling. <laughs> um, now, because um, I believe that the mover of an amendment does not have a right of reply, so I apologise for saying that earlier, uh, Councillor Messina. So I'll put that item to vote for it to be added into... Uh, this evening's uh, budget. So, all those in favour? I have Councillor Dimitriadis, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Messina, Councillor Greco, and myself. All those against? Councillor Hannan, Councillor Rennie, Councillor Newton. All those abstaining? Councillor McCarthy. Thank you. So, that item, all those two items, have been added, and we now have the sustainative, the abstaintive motion. Um, councillors, are there any other amendments? Councillor McCarthy. Uh, thanks, Mayor. I have an amendment um, which uh, officers will have available and which has been circulated to councillors. Thank you. We'll just wait for that to come up on the screen. Um, we'll wait for it to come up the screen. First, I just want to... Uh, I just want to ask Councillor McCarthy if that's your amendment. Uh, that looks correct in relation to point seven, and I believe there's a second part to the amendment in relation to part 22 of the motion. So maybe just to scroll down, <coughs> if, if that's possible. And that's correct as well. Excellent. Thank Mayor, you. Mayor, is the mover, I'm happy to accept that amendment. Also happy to accept. Okay, but before I do so, I need to ask councillors who consent to the motion amendment to include the item in the final budget being accepted for... Uh, I need to um, declare, declare a conflict of conflict? interest and I'll be leaving the chamber. All right, thank you. Uh, the conflict of interest is um, by way of residential amenity of direct family member in general conflict. No problem. Um, Councillor Dimitriotis? I've, I've got a question, just a quick one about this amendment, if I can ask an officer. Yeah, we'll wait for Councillor Lawrence to leave the chamber and then you can ask your question. Councillor Dimitriadis, your question. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to ask if um, Council's gone to tender for a golf architect um, to for this particular project. There's no question time on that, is it? Uh, through you, Mayor. 
Um, could I just ask for some clarification, Councillor? Are you referring to the concept design for the path at Northcote Golf Course? Um, I think it's for everything. So the golf architect is to design the whole um, um, precinct. Can I just, sorry, but I've just received clarification that the fact that we started the debate on this item, um, I'm not sure if that we can actually ask questions now. Through you, Mayor. Um, firstly, we need to go through the process of actually accepting it into the agenda for consideration and then Councillor Dimitriatis will have the opportunity to ask her question if it is accepted in. Okay, so I'll read out this again. Can I, well, I didn't finish it, but can I ask the councillors who consent to the motion amendment to include the item in the final budget being accepted for consideration and debate to raise their hands? So this is not a vote, it's actually we're just raising our hands that we accept for the motion to, to be considered. That's been carried unanimously. Apologies, now we can ask the question because now it's been considered. Should I ask the question again, Ma? Thank you. I just wanted to ask if um, council's going to tender for a golf architect because this particular amendment looks at um, a path which I believe a golf architect will also be designing. Uh, will also be looking at how it could affect the part, the um, Northgate Golf Course. Thanks for your question, Councillor. Through you, Mayor. Um, a concept design has been created for the path alignment. Um, this is separate to the golf master plan and other elements that are being undertaken. But a plan has been um, designed, uh, which will be coming back to council in November. Sorry, Mayor, I just wanted to ask if council's gone to tender on the golf architect. So, three, Mayor. Mr Kenzie, the council resolution previously was to use some of the SRV funding to uh, engage a golf architect to do a concept plan for the layout and the integration of that with the, the overarching plan for the space. So I think the question is, have we engaged a golf architect to do that concept plan yet? And if we haven't, that's fine. We can take on notice when we'll be able to do that. Thanks for the clarification. Through you, Mayor. Uh, no, we haven't engaged a golf architect for that piece of work yet. Can I have a follow-up question? Um, when will Council be engaging a golf architect for the work? Because I believe it's coming back to Council in November, the work, the, all the works. Thanks, Councillor. Through you, Mayor. That's correct. We will be going to market very shortly uh, and we'll be prepared to come back to Council in November. Um, I'd like to ask a question because I know that this comes up quite a bit in reference, are there safety concerns at this point in time, whether we go ahead with this amendment or do we wait for reports? So my question is, um, is there safety concerns at this point in time regarding not having a path there at this point in time or... Or cannot wait. So through you, may I just clarify that, that for Mr McKenzie might assist me. Um, so the previous resolution was for us not to do any work until we got the full concept plans and reports back, which we've just heard are coming back in November. Um, the question from the Mayor is, are there any current safety concerns uh, and what would we do if there were safety concerns and we didn't have the funding for this path? Um, it, I could answer the second one. Um, for councillors, Mayor. Um, obviously, if there's a safety concern, we'd bring that matter into council and, and look to fund it straight away. Um, but are there any current safety concerns, that, Mr McKenzie, that is the question that need to be addressed now or, this, or next financial year? Through you, Mayor. Uh, there's no current safety concerns that we're aware of uh, from a path perspective. It is an unmade path uh, and subject to weather conditions, but there's no existing safety concerns at present. Councillor Greco. Um, thank you, Mayor. Just, just along those lines, through you, Mayor, I'd just like to ask our officers whether there's been any reports by residents in regards to um, safety issues and um, how many um, have been reported and secondly um, whether there have been any um, requests and how many requests have been made um, in 
to the council in relation to the um, unsuitability of the current pathway the way it stands now. Okay, Rachel Olivier. Uh, so I've just confirmed with Mr McKenzie that he's not aware of anything in particular. That said, we don't have the sort of full detail of councillors' request system at hand, um, but we're not aware of any particular issues currently arising. May I, uh, just clarification on my second question, whether there's been any specific requests by residents in relation to the suitability of the pathway and whether the pathway needs immediate improvement. Can you advise on any requests that have been made? Rachel? Uh, through you, Mayor, we're not aware of any specific requests. Councillors, are there any further questions on this item? Councillors, it's just come to my um, acknowledgement that the fact that um, now that we are considering this, all I have to do is ask if the mover and seconder would like to accept this as part of the budget. Yes. Yes, I would. Thank you, Mayor. And then that becomes the sustainative motion. And it's not up for debate. However, I will get further clarification. Yeah, through you, Mayor. So according to the Governor's rules, because the mover and seconder have accepted it, it's now built and baked in to the budget. However, councillor, a councillor may ask if they don't want to vote it for the Mayor to take that item in part and pull it out again so it can be voted on separately. But at the moment it's in. Councillor Dimitriatis and then I believe Councillor McCarthy has a question. Um, as per the advice we've just been given, I'm happy to request that this item be um, removed or uh, what was the vote on, voted on in part? Uh, Mayor. Councillor Rennie. If a determination is made that it's suitable to pick this budget apart and vote in parts, there are parts of the budget that I'm not happy with and I'll make a similar request that those parts of the budget that I disagree with, of which I'd say there were about five or six, um, I'll ask equally that they be voted on separately. Thank you. Just for the purposes of clarity in terms of the impact that would have. Yep. I, I'm, I'm happy to, to leave it in for now and um, I think we'll, we'll have a break and we'll have a discussion because I know that that wasn't um, that was news to me, but also um, the fact that there's no safety concerns. So I'm not sure what the urgency at this point in time on this item, as no works can be done until anyway after all the reports had come back, is what was my understanding. But I'll go over to Councillor McCarthy. You have a question? M Mayor, I'm a little bit concerned about um, statements being made um, that are actually not factual um, and, in fact, may give both councillors and also the gallery, the incorrect imp impression. I have in my own email correspondence from residents in my ward, the South West Ward, who live adjacent to the site, who have complained that they are unable to access what is currently an unmade path because of their own mobility issues. I have, Mayor, in my own email, emails from, from residents who are reliant upon wheelchairs and other mobility impairments. The point here is not about safety as a general theme. The question is actually about access and about all access. Th that's one thing. The other thing which I think is worth mentioning, Mayor, and I would invite the CEO if, if, through you if, if it's possible, the previous decision of council, as I understand, meant that nothing can actually happen here on this site until those reports are received in November. So any talk of immediate action in relation to this item is a fallacy. 
because nothing, as I believe Council has already been advised on numerous occasions, nothing can actually happen in relation to this path until January 2024 at the earliest, following those reports. So councillors who don't want to see a path constructed have a chance to have that say in November when we get that item coming back to us. But until then, this is simply to make sure that there is money should council make that determination in November. If the money goes unspent, then the money goes unspent. So Mayor, I, th I think we need to be really honest here, but I would ask if through you, if the CEO can confirm what I've just said. Uh, through you, Mayor, uh, Councillor McCarthy is correct. We were asked about safety. We didn't talk about amenity and access, but um, amenity and access um, are one of the reasons why we need to upgrade the path at some point. Um, and it's correct that the Councillor's previous resolution means that we are instructed administratively to do no work until all the reports are in, in November. So the earliest this would probably happen is early 2024. <laughs> Councillor Dimitriatis. Um, thank you, Mayor. I just wanted clarity because I believe the advice that we were given previously was that um, this particular money is not for safety issues. It's for um, designing the path, whereas um, we're creating the path, sorry. Whereas if there was to be a safety concern, um, the CEO would come back to councillors and we would have to address that um, separately. So this money at the $100,000 has nothing to do with safety is my understanding. It's to do with the construction of the path and currently there's no safety concerns. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, through you, Mayor, um, my comments before was if there was a safety issue that emerged, it is an unmade path, so it is not at the amenity or access standard that you'd want for all access, which is why administration Administrative, we said put not just the hundred in uh, originally, but the two hundred and fifty k in in twenty four twenty five to to upgrade that that bit of the park and make it accessible and and um, available to all citizens. A safety concern that might emerge might be it's an unmade path, might be soil slippage or something like that, which requires um, some some temporary safety measures to be put in until we can do the permanent path. It's on those occasions that we would certainly come back to you and we probably wouldn't, if it was really urgent, we'd probably do it and then come and tell you we'd done it, that we'd had to fix up that bit of the path. It might be, you know, a muddy path that's subject to soil erosion, foot traffic, heavy rain. Of course, we might need to spend some money on it. So my point was made in that context. Does that clarify? Yep. I just have Councillor my, Greco? Just one further clarification, if I may. If um, I could, I'd like to raise a point of order, Mayor, and I apologise. I know we're trying to avoid them, but the point of order is 10.11a, that this uh, these proceedings generally are contrary to the meeting rules. I'm not sure under what provisions of the meeting we've effectively ceased the business of the meeting to ask questions on a matter which has been effectively resolved through normal meeting procedures. So we've effectively interrupted the meeting. We're outside of debate to ask questions when it's well established that we don't uh, have questions in the middle of a debate. Thank you. Um, I, I had allowed it because as we've gone back on this item in reference to something that was similar or intent, it has been accepted as part of the sustainative motion. I've allowed question time because it wasn't something that we had anticipated or understood in the process and it was a new um, to myself and I'm sure to other councillors in reference to the governance to this item. As it's different to the way we've done council budget, as budgets previously, so that's why I've allowed question time. We haven't entered the debate on the item. We were allowing questions, so it's it's been accepted and I wanted to ensure that councillors were comfortable in voting on something and I'd rather have those questions times now rather than pull it all apart in um, in half an hour's time. Over to you. Yep. Yep. Uh, through you, Mayor. Um, Councillor Lawrence needs to be invited back into the chamber. The sustainative motion. Okay, councillors, um, we'll wait for Councillor Lawrence to come back into 
the chamber, and then I believe that there's a... And we'll go for... I think we have one more amendment for Councillor Lawrence. So do we have Councillor Lawrence's amendment? So once that comes up, I'll ask Councillor Lawrence if that's his amendment. And I will also then ask Councillors, while that amendment, while we're waiting for that amendment, can I ask Councillors, once you see it... <coughs> So we have point C there. Uh, can you kindly confirm that that is your yes, amendment? Yes, that's my amendment. Yes. Okay. Councillors, before we go to the next step, I'm going to ask councillors uh, for your consent to the motion amendment to include the item in the final budget being accepted for consideration and debate to raise their hands. That's been carried unanimously. Oh, it's not a vote, but... Um, to the mover and the seconder, do you accept Councillor Lawrence's amendment? Uh, no, I'd like to hear debate, thanks. Sure. Councillor Lawrence, do I have a seconder for your Councillor Greco? Councillor Lawrence. Um, yes, thank you, Mayor Williams. Um, this amendment um, fundamentally brings forward by two years the remediation which this council has uh, adopted. It was one of the, it was the cheaper option offered by EPA for remediation in regards to the lead contamination that was discovered now three years ago uh, at Clements Reserve, which is a historical uh, um, contamination from uh, use of recreation rifle range there. Um, there is obviously was also asbestos introduced over the years there when the Board of Works and various other people were occupying the site. Um, council has almost completed the purchase of the Victorian uh, Vic Roads um, there. Uh, that's a different budget item, which is a different part of the budget. This is fundamentally addresses the open space levy. And the proposal here is 150,000 to do the preparation work and for the next budget year to have the 1.65 million from the open space levy. Now, the obvious thing there is, of course, that the open space levy will be growing by three million a year, so that will be a, a, a great comfort. But also, the open space levy can't be used for other things like operational salary rises, et cetera, et cetera. It can only be used for operational. So it would be a good hallmark and landmark of this council to get on, having discovered this historical wrong uh, and contamination, and, and to actually act on it and get it in order. Um, and so that's uh, fundamentally the proposition here, that this does become uh, a milestone for this council to collectively own. Um, Madam Mayor, I just want to check that I can later speak in to the substantive motion. But that's all I've got to say on this one. Yeah, uh, through you, Mayor. We're currently, <coughs> excuse me, um, discussing or debating the amendment by Councillor Lawrence. Depending on the outcome, Councillor Lawrence will have an opportunity to speak with the substantive motion. 
I will allow questions because, as I said, it was unusual and I should have asked for that earlier. Uh, Councillor Messina. Thank you, uh, Mayor Williams. Through you, um, I understand the uh, amendment for this um, for the, this particular item number C. My question is, is um, there is a progression towards a budget and we do have a time and a place where we can perhaps revital, re, re, redirect the budget during the year. What process is that for us to reconsider it? I know there are some items that might blow our budget right over. So I'm wondering what is the process moving forward where we consider item C again in this chamber? Should that not be successful right now? Over to you, Peter. Uh, th through you, Mayor, you have um, a quarterly budget review process where you can consider items. This is a significant item, though, so you'd, I think you'd need significant under underspend showing in your quarterly reviews to bring it forward. Um, you have another opportunity, obviously, next year to bring it forward in another year. Um, um, but... Um, yeah, basically it's your quarterly budget reviews and that will tell you whether there are savings in other projects that could be applied to projects like this. Your quarterly budget reviews um, in going forward will also check in on our financial assumptions that sit behind our 10-year plan uh, and in particular um, the growth projections will go to the, the future open space contributions. So your quarterly budget reviews will give you a process by which you can check your financial assumptions um, to ensure that the open space levy that you're predicting in your financial plan is actually going to come in at that revenue level. My question to you, Peter, is in reference to if this is allocated now and what money that we were going to put aside for a future projects such as Reservoir Leisure Centre and the compounding effect in reference to, to, to putting something as substantial as this now? So this uh, amendment, Mayor, through you has two effects. One is it um, brings forward open space um, expenditure that we uh, were not planning for in the 10-year financial plan. Um, we are in general, trying to keep um, a significant sum aside for a major project. Um, so Council have utilised a uh, significant open space contribution for the Northcote Aquatic and Recreation Centre. That went to the funding of that. Trying to do a similar thing for a large project like Resi, the, the Reservoir Leisure Centre, and that would be funded through open space, hopefully from the future fund, if we're able to make some asset um, asset sales to fund that from assets we don't use um, or need and also future borrowings and rates funding. So there'll be a mix to fund that large project. So the second effect is it in effect reduces in our four-year plan which you are passing tonight, year three, um, uh, down which is at 3146. It will reduce that down to just, on, just under 30 million. And in year four, it will reduce um, your capital works program, which is for the next council, uh, from 34.8 million down to um, about 33.2, if I've got my maths right. So you are you are reducing future spend in years three and four by bringing this forward, um, and you are um, reducing potentially the balance of open space. Um, which could be refunded in year three and four if you don't, if the next council don't increase the capital budget back up again. Councillor Messina. I'm sorry, Mayor, I have a supplementary question based on what um, the CEO has just intended. So basically what I'm hearing is that it's either Clements Reserve or Reservoir Leisure Centre in terms of what we do moving forward um, in terms of the open space. So allocating more open space to, reserv to Clements Reserve indicates that there's other places that have been identified where there's a lack of space, open space in the municipality and there probably will be a deficit. Is that correct in making that assumption? Uh, I wouldn't put it that directly uh, through your Mayor, Councillor Messina. I'd say that um, your, your, your future open space contributions depends on your assumptions on growth. So that's always a prediction. Um, I don't think it's a trade-off for Resi Leisure Centre because um, you would just have to find other forms of funding to make up if you don't have sufficient open space to fund it. 
Um, and that is sometime in the future, as we all know. Um, I think the major impact here is um, you, you, you're making a significant spend above your four-year capital program, and particularly in years three and four, you, you're putting a four-year budget which uh, reduces the capital work spend um, quite significantly in year four. And as we know, and we've talked about through the budget process, the capital works program um, is probably at its at its limit in terms of covering depreciation, so that it's actually the future reduction in capital works and, and not bringing this forward and not deferring it through, not balancing the budget through reducing another project is probably the biggest problem. In reference to development, um, if that decreases, then we won't be getting as much also in the open space levy, which can also have a, a follow-on effect. Councillors, are there any further questions before I ask for the mover and seconder if they will now accept this item? We no. already said no, we started debate. Okay, thank you. I don't accept. Um, do I have a second? I had a seconder. Um, I'll Councillor Rennie? I'll, I'll speak to the item, or it sounds as though Councillor Messina might speak to the item of, of no consequence which order, but w when you're ready to take another speaker, I've indicated I'd like to speak to the item. Thank you, Mayor. Are there any speakers on this item? Lawrence hasn't spoken on the item. Uh, he did speak on the item. And I'm, I'm the second, uh, and I'm the seconder, Mayor. And I'll reserve my right to speak, thanks. So I was asking any other councillors if they would like to speak on the item. Councillor Rennie. Um, thank you, Mayor Williams, and thank you, um, Councillor Lawrence, for your continued advocacy on this issue. Um, the most significant challenge, I think, for me in, in this amendment is the fact that we don't yet own this land. And I have very significant reservations about us proceeding um, with this amendment tonight in the context of not yet having the ownership of the land. There is no immediate risk uh, to any community member from the contamination in the land. We know and acknowledge that contamination is there. We have dealt with it and put in place um, reasonable measures which have been approved by the EPA. And we have a long-term plan to remediate the land and I don't think there's a councillor here who doesn't believe that that's what needs to happen and that will happen uh, in time. I think that it would be good for us to revisit uh, this question once the land is actually in council's ownership. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other councillors would like to speak on the item? Councillor Hannan. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll also be speaking against this item. Um, not because, uh, as Councillor Rennie said, I, I, uh, or I think anyone doesn't think that the work needs to happen. It's purely a question of timing. Um, uh, picking up on the questions from before, uh, this is not budget neutral. Um, it's not a simple matter of taking a cost from later and bringing it earlier. That, that has implications. That, 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 that has implications for what we can do this year um, and what we can do in future years. Um, and it's, it's not the only very worthy budget that's sitting two, three years out in the in the future budget. Um, Bill Laurie Oval, for example, is one that we've had community members submit to this council um, in the last meeting. Um, it's desperately needed. It's desperately needed for a remake of that oval. We've had funding to do it. Um, we've had to defer it, um, uh, much as I wish we would have proceeded. Um, there are a, a number of other worthy projects that need to get done and are in the future year's budget. There is no need to bring this one forward right now. And as I said, it actually does have budget implication. It is not a net neutral uh, decision, especially when you talk about compounding finances. Of it. It's a big ticket item. It's, it's $1.6 million. Um, those costs compound and they have implications for our future budget. Thank you. 
I'm going to allow Councillor Greco the time to, because you reserved your speaking rights, that to speak now. Councillor Lawrence, you do not have a right of reply, as is an amendment, and then we'll put this item to vote. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Mayor Williams. Look, um, I haven't heard any arguments um, at all tonight about why this can't be done now. Firstly, I'm not convinced of the financial arguments. Uh, all we are doing is moving something that was going to be done in a couple of years' time to be done in this financial year. Uh, it was part of the overall planning process, so I'm not convinced of the financial arguments, and I think it's a bit uh, superfluous to try and say that something may be excluded in the future or something like that. Um, we've got to look at this financially and factually. The other thing, too, is that if you look at the site, it's an ugly site. It's got fencing around it. People can't play on it. Kids roam around in that park. And it's not a discretionary item. We're not saying that this needs to be done in order to beautify the area. This is a safety issue. It's an environmental issue. This council prides itself on being a, a, a council that um, fights for environmental issues. Here we have clear envi um, em em environmental legacy issue and we're not, and we're not addressing it. And so um, I would think that, you know, given that it's a safety issue, an environmental issue, it ticks all these uh, um, boxes. And as a council that's been concerned about those t issues, uh, we're, not, we're not proceeding uh, forward with it. So I, I would urge councillors that, uh, to really reconsider this and in relation to um, the next few years, if we were to start this process now, um, also the next few years, it does not mean um, that additional money would need to be spent. Our capital works budget, and we all know that, has fluctuated a couple of millions of dollars each year. It doesn't fall on the same amount each year. It fluctuates. We have our capital works budgets uh, of $60 million as a result of the, um, the, 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 the NARC. So, councillors, um, the arguments are there for this to happen if we are concerned about safety and if we are concerned about the environment and we Thank are concerned you, about up. residents in the northern areas to have access to equal um, recreational facilities as they do in the south. Thank you. Councillors, I'll be asking for this item to be voted on, whether it will be included into the budget and it will be the, the substantive motion. Uh, all those in favour for this item? I have Councillor Dimitriatis, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Messina, Councillor Greco. All those against, I have Councillor Hannan, Councillor Rennie, Councillor Newton, Councillor McCarthy, and I have it stamped on the item. That I That item has been lost, so it will not be considered in this evening's substantive motion into the budget. Councillors, I'm asking if we can have a, a short break and we'll just come just back in about hopefully five minutes just after eight o'clock. Thank you. I'm going to acknowledge and thank our Auslan because I know they're only going to be here to 8 o'clock. <laughs> 